Today is February 3rd, and we're beginning a new gospel, the Gospel of Mark. Uh, one of the things that you're going to find is uh, the gospel, sometimes similar stories are told, uh, and they are presented from that individual's perspective, but still, we know that it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. So we get some interesting additional insights many times as we read these different accounts. The book of Mark, Matthew, which reveals the, Jesus as Messiah, the book of Mark reveals Jesus as the miracle worker or the wonder worker. There are so many accounts of um, healings and deliverances and and even those being raised from the dead. So it's a fascinating book, but it moves at a very rapid pace. Unlike Matthew, there is no introduction to the birth of Jesus. It immediately moves into the baptism of Jesus. So in Mark chapter one, John the Baptist is again identified as the one who's preparing the way. He's a strange and he's an unusual man. He's crude, he's uh, abrasive, he dresses differently, he, he, his diet is different, uh, but, but he's the forerunner that's paving the way for the coming of Jesus. He's baptizing, a baptism of, very interesting, repentance. That's what the Bible says in the fourth verse. And uh, for the remission of sins, that is uh, the removal of sin from their life. Now, uh, then he introduces Jesus. Hey, there's one that's coming after me. Uh, who's, uh, I'm not worthy to stoop down, untie his straps of his uh, sandals, but he's going to baptize you not just with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus then is sent into the wilderness to be tempted. There's very little detail that's given about that temptation in here, other than the fact that the angels ministered to him. Jesus is beginning his uh, ministry. Uh, he calls his, uh, his disciples. It's the first one uh, that we find here in verse 16. He's going to go to uh, Simon and Andrew. And uh, he, all he says is, follow me. It's, it's remarkable that in 18th verse it says, they immediately left their nets and they followed Jesus. Now, Jesus uh, is, uh, their response to quickly is either because they're aware of who this man is or intrigued, but definitely they are responding in their very infant faith. So Jesus uh, is casting out unclean spirits. You see this in verse 23, unclean, whatever that spirit is, it was a perverted spirit. And, uh, and they talk, they cry out to Jesus, leave us alone. And they identify Jesus as the son of God. That's the reason Jesus shuts that down right away. Uh, he, uh, in many ways, wanted to keep that uh, that revelation uh, under cover. And uh, Jesus, though, in verse 25, rebukes this spirit and commands him to be quiet and to come out. I love the fact that Jesus just says, be quiet, and they can't say anything more, demonstrating the authority and the rule of Jesus, that he had all that power to do so. The Bible says that with authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they have to obey him. He goes over to Peter's uh, mother-in-law. She's ill with a fever. The Bible says in verse 31, he doesn't pray a prayer. He doesn't lay hands on her. What does he do? Takes her by the hand. He lifts her up and immediately the fever leaves. I'll tell you what, I, if we could just remind ourselves that we're, we're kingdom people and that everywhere we go, we're carrying the glory of God because he lives on the inside of us. We could function like Jesus. The Bible tells us that he went everywhere. Uh, in fact, look at if you find in verse 34, it says he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Every demon, which is a fallen angel, knew who Jesus was. And, and they, uh, they speak out and Jesus for, was re saying, hey, you can't. I, I will not allow you to speak. And they could not speak. He goes preaching. Uh, but notice something in the uh, 35th verse, he departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. This is so interesting because Jesus, who's the son of God, demonstrates that he needed this time alone with the father, paving the way as a model for all of us of the importance for you and I to be a people of prayer. If Jesus needed to get away in a solitary place to pray as the son of God, how much more you and I need to be a people who are intentional about getting alone to pray. And verse 39, he's, he's preaching 
And what is his mission? Casting out spirits. He's preaching and he's casting out demons. He goes to a leper and the leper says to him, hey, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I am willing. And he lays hands on him and immediately the leprosy leaves him and he's cleansed. All of this is a revelation of the power, the authority, the dominion of Jesus Christ. He is the son of God. The demons know he is. Uh, he's exercising the commission that God has upon his life. He's modeling for you and I what I believe is New Testament theology or Christianity. You and I are to be living in the power and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you have a blessed day today and go with that sense of the kingdom of God on the inside of you. Jesus lives on the inside of your heart and his Jesus lives everywhere you go. You're taking Jesus and may that power flow through your life today.